Oops. Anyway, if anyone actually watches this on YouTube, um, I'm doing problem ten. I figured out that I I wrote I wrote the distance as the formula that we always use for the distance between two points, and and I I did implicit differentiation. So I'm here. Um, so uh, the problem is asking for for d prime. So I guess the question is, do I know everything else? Um, do I know? dx1, x2, y1, y2, all those. Well, um, the I was told that the distance was going east and it was 20 miles. So I know a bunch of these things. Um, so I know the distance is 20. Right, twenty miles. <clears throat> Remember, you always take the derivative first and then solve. Um, and then the coordinates. Well, I need to, I need to put um, an origin somewhere. So, um, so let's say, say the car is the origin. I mean, if there's no, if there's no coordinates anywhere, you, you get to choose where you put them. So if the car is at zero, zero, and the motorcycles, the motorcycle is 20 miles east. The coordinates of the of the motorcycle, well, um, what are they? Um, it's sitting on the x-axis. So uh, the the well, the north-south coordinate is zero, and it's 20 miles to the right, so it's 20 zero. So this tells me um, this tells me that x one is zero. So I said the coordinates of the car were zero. <clears throat> and the coordinates of the motorcycle are twenty zero. Okay. If you want to ask questions, feel free to stop me. So, um, uh, I said two d d prime is x one minus x two uh, times two plus to y1 minus y2. Um, and I said d is 20. Um, x1 is 0. x2 is also 0. y1 is also 0. And x2 is 20. So I'm left with 40 d prime equals to 2 times 20 times x1 prime minus x2 prime plus um, 2 times um, 0 minus 0 times something that is just going to 
it's not going to matter because it's multiplied by zero. So d prime is um, x1 prime minus x2 prime. Okay, so only two things left to go. Could you do a problem from each side on the review after this? <laughs> I don't know. I, the, I don't know what you mean from each side. If you mean from each of the 16 questions that I put in the review, probably won't have time. Um, but, you know, if you have a preference, um, I can do, um, I can do some. I can do as many as I, I will fit in one and a half. And then so by then, did, what's that? I said, so how did you get that d prime is equal to x prime one minus x prime two? Is that because you multiplied two times 20 and then divided it and got uh, one? Yeah, so yeah, there's, there's 40 on both sides. So I can just divide by 40. Okay. Oh, it's a good idea. You can put whatever you want me to do in the chat, and then when I'm done with this one, I'll just go in order. Okay, uh, so I need to find x1 prime and x2 prime. So um, x1 prime, this is the, the change in x coordinate of the car. So, um, well, that car, the car is going north. So, um, x1 prime is zero because the, because, uh, the car's x coordinate is not changing. So x2 prime, x2 prime is the complicated thing. Um, so I said d prime is x1 prime minus x2 prime. Oh, this was oh, my mistake there. Um, there's a, there's a negative sign that I missed. Um, this is oh, this is white too. So um, this wasn't twenty. It was supposed to be x one is supposed to be zero and x two is supposed to be twenty. So this is not uh, forty. This is negative forty. So d prime is negative x1 prime plus x2 prime. Oops. <clears throat> okay. Um, okay, other way around. So now that I figure out that x1 prime is zero, um, I know that d prime is the same as x2 prime. So all I need to find out is x2 prime. So um, I need to find the change in X coordinate of the motorcycle. So it's it's going ten miles per hour diagonally. Um, so the question is, after one hour, how fast is it um, 
how fast has he, has he moved to the right? I guess. After one hour, how far east is it? Well, after one hour, it has moved um, some miles diagonally. So, zero hours, one hour. And this is 10 miles. So the question is, um, how big is this, this distance? And what we can do is use the, use trigonometry. So this is um, a right triangle. So I have a right triangle whose hypotenuse is 10. Um, and I want to know how, how long this side is. So I guess two ways to, two ways to do this. Either I figure out this angle or I figure out this side. Um, either, so either you use the angle Um, going northeast um, means the angle is 45 degrees. So 10 x 45, this means that x over 10 is the cosine of 45 degrees. So x over 10 is root 2 divided by 2. And x is 5 root 2 miles. So that's one way. Um, or the other way to do the same thing is to think of the other side. All right. I'm gonna flip the page. I mean, you can look at these notes. The this oof. okay. Whoever is looking at the Jamboard will call you a spam. Um so uh the other way to do this to reach pi root two is to realize that this is also X. This is a car the motorcycle moves um, the same distance uh, north and east. So, um, so if you know that you have a right triangle and both legs, oof, what a terrible drawing, both legs have side, size length x, then Pythagoras or any of the people in his cult would tell you that the sum of these squares is um, the squares of the legs is the square of the hypotenuse, so 2x squared is 100, so x is 50, so x squared is 50. So x is the root of 50, which is the root of 25 times 2, which is the root of 25 times the root of 2, which is 5 root 2. So, um, oof. In conclusion, the, the speed um, 
the horizontal speed of the motorcycle. is um, 502 miles per hour. And we said that Z prime, which is what we wanted was X2 prime. So, uh, so that's the answer. The answer seems to be 502. Um, any questions? All right, um, okay, Pascal wants me to go over 1e. So since nobody um, else said anything else, I'm gonna go do 1e. Uh, if you want me to do another problem, um, you can put it in the chat or ask me at the end. Okay. Okay, so this limit. So, um, this is the same, I guess, as the logarithm x cubed times the logarithm cubed. I don't know if that will matter or not. But anyway. What is hyperbolic sign? So, um, hyperbolic sign is nothing but a strange way to call e to the x plus e to the negative x divided by two. Um, so this is just x cubed is the limit. of this whole thing. No, oh no, this is cosine, oh, uh, negative. And I don't like, I mean, I don't like having a two, I don't like having a denominator in my denominator. Uh, I don't feel like denominating while I denominate. So uh, I'm just gonna put that in the numerator. Okay, so what is happening to this limit? Uh, well, if x is approaching zero, x cubed is approaching zero. Um, the logarithm of x, so the logarithm of x is approaching ne negative infinity. Um, the logarithm of x looks like this. Um, as x approaches zero from the right, um, y approaches negative infinity. It's going down. It has a vertical asymptote. Um, so I have zero times negative infinity. That's probably not great. And the denominator is approaching, well, e to the zero is one. And e to the negative zero is one. So, okay, so this is uh, zero times infinity divided by zero. So that's not great. Um, so what I should do, I want to use L'Hopital's rule. Um, but to be able to do it, I need to have zero divided by zero or infinity divided by infinity. So, um, what I, what I need, so is either, 
either send uh, the infinity to the denominator or um, or flip the zeros around, I guess. I think those are my two options. <clears throat> so, um, x cubed log of x cubed um, divided by e to the x uh, uh, minus e to the negative x. So, um, this is approaching a negative infinity. Both of these are zero. So just because, well, what do I prefer? What do I prefer? It seems seems easier to put the logarithm in the denominator. Maybe I'll regret this, I don't know. So these are the same. Can you change the screen? Oh, thank you. Uh, right, so um, this is what I what you get when you just write what sign hyper, hyperbolic sign is. Uh, lo log of x cubed, is the thing that is upside down it should be, I want it to go to zero and not to negative infinity. So let me, um, let me put, um, put it in the denominator with the opposite exponents because this is how uh, powers work. So um, now this is zero divided by zero now. Uh, and I can apply L'Hopital's rule. So uh, it says, um, I'm gonna ignore that zero, that two, uh, two times the limit of this whole thing. is the limit of the derivatives. Um, so, um, so the top one is easy, it's just three x squared. Now the bottom one, um, Uh, so, okay, so I have to use the product rule. It's not going to stay in here with it. Sorry. Next page. Um, the limit is x equal to zero. So derivative of the top and the bottom two three x squared and now the product rule I take derivative of the first so derivative of e to the x plus e to the negative x derivative of the exponential is um, itself and then the derivative of e to the negative x uh, well, that's a composition that's uh, negative x composed with the exponential. So the derivative of the outside is just itself, but the derivative of the inside is negative one. Okay. 
this is the derivative of negative x uh, times the function. No, oh, shit. Let's start with a minus sign. So this is a plus sign. Okay. Um, times the original function. <clears throat> plus um, the what I had. So this is the the original function times the derivative of um, the derivative of the second function. So that's negative three times the logarithm of x, so negative four. So that's the derivative of the outside and the derivative of the inside is one over x. So what do I do now? Did I make my life easier or more complicated? That's the real question. Um, so this became, if I, I don't like having one over x there. Maybe, oh, maybe I'll keep it there. So I ended up with e to the x. I had this two floating around e to the x plus e to the negative x. Times the logarithm to the power minus three plus e to the x minus e to the negative x. And then x to the minus one. Okay, so, um, well, the, the bottom part split into two pieces. Um, so what is this approaching? This is approaching zero. This is approaching two, so that's great. Two is not gonna be bad for me, but this is approaching zero. Um, this is approaching zero as well. Uh, this is approaching infinity. And this is approaching um, zero. So I guess this limit, I don't even know what it is. Um, I could try to do it separately, uh, but it might be, this might be zero divided by zero still. So I guess if, if this is not zero divided by zero, then I'm gonna be done. So I should try to do this limit. Let's solve the limit of uh, sex approach approach to zero of uh, e to the x minus e to the negative x log of x to the negative four times x minus x inverse. <clears throat> okay. You know what? I'm maybe this is not worth it. Um, I don't know why I let myself down this path. Uh, so let's try a different way. Which is what you should do when it seems like you're not making things simpler. Um, the limit as x approaches zero of x log x cubed divided by hyperbolic sine of x. 
so this is approaching zero because this will be approaching zero. So I, I do all this all without dividing by the stupid logarithm. Um, <clears throat> well, it turns out, um, I remember, I remember that the limit Sx approaches zero of x log x is actually zero. Is it good to remember that the logarithm it approach it approaches infinity very very slowly? So you multiply it by x, it's going to approach zero. Um, this was in the book, which by the way you can use for um, you can use for the exam. I said. Um, so I guess I guess if you had this in the exam, you could just like tell me which page it is or something. Um, but anyway, I can do this by L'Hopital's rule. Um, the limit as x approaches zero of log of x divided by x inverse. So what you do is put the x inverse in the denominator. So this becomes infinity over infinity, and you use L'Hopital's rule. And when you take derivatives, this becomes very easy to do. This is x inverse divided by negative x to the negative 2, uh, which is the limit of negative x, which is 0. So this is 0. So this is 0 divided by 0. So um, I can apply L'Hopital here. Uh, without any without moving things around. And I like doing that because uh, this denominator, its derivative is um, is one. So I'm not gonna get zero over zero anymore. So let's do this. Um, So since this I know now is zero divided by zero, that by um so that looks like um I guess that the, the numerator looks like a composition of x log x with the the cube. So let's use the chain rule derivative of the outside times the derivative of the inside. So the derivative of the inside is, well, the inside is a product. So it's one times log x plus x times uh, one over x. And the derivative of hyperbolic sine, you can, well, you can use the book, it's cosine, it's hyperbolic cosine. Um, so um, if I simplify this, um, I have three x log x uh, squared times uh, log x plus one. Oh, this is great. Uh, so what do I get? So this is approaching zero. Yeah. This is approaching negative infinity. But this is approaching one. So I only need to, so this looks a lot nicer now. I can write it like, this um, and here I guess I have zero times infinity, so I don't know what I have, but um. 
this approach is one. So there's no there's no indeterminacy there. Um, anything divided by one is just anything. So I'm gonna go ignore it for the rest of the time. Uh, this approach is zero. So anything, anything, even even if the limit does not exist, plus zero divided by one is just itself. Um, which means uh, you only need to find the limit of x squared log cubed. Oh, I can do that. So um, this is just like the limit of x log x. It's um, uh, it's um, zero times infinity. So what I do is um, put the x's in the denominator so that um, so that it becomes. Um, infinity divided by infinity. And I can use Lobitzal's rule. Now, um, if I use Lobitzal's rule, I take the derivative of the numerator, which is the derivative of the outside times the derivative of the inside and then the derivative of the denominator is negative 2x to the negative 3 so 9 times the logarithm squared and then this so oh, the x that is dividing goes in the denominator so this is the limit of the logarithm uh, divided by x to the negative two. So I know this limit already. I could click keep doing log tell, but I, I really don't need to. This is the limit of x squared log x, which is the same thing as the limit of x log x squared multiplied by that number. And this is zero. So this is zero, so this is zero, so the whole limit was zero. All right, that was kind of long, but well, it would, it would have been shorter if I had taken the shortest path the first time. But it doesn't matter, you have to realize uh, that sometimes you just take the wrong path at the beginning. The only way to know what you did is um, the only way to know that you took the wrong path is to take it. Okay. Um, if there's no questions, which like I said, feel free to jump in if you have any questions. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep going. So Pascal already asked a question. So I guess until everyone gets one, you don't get a second one. Uh, so I'm gonna move on to Brandon. Uh, who said 16L, 16L. The indefinite integral of 16, uh, of the logarithm squared divided by x. Well, when you see a logarithm, um, 
you can go, what if I make u the logarithm? Would that work? Um, if you do that, you need to make du the derivative, which means that you're making du 1 over x dx. And if you see a logarithm and you see a 1 over x, that should make you really happy because that's just going to be du. So this is going to be uh, u squared. And this is the integral of u squared du. U, u was the logarithm of x, and du was dx, some 1 over x. And we know the indefinite integral of u squared is u cubed divided by 3. It's what gives me as derivative um, u squared. And if I go back in the in the substitution, I get u equals log x cubed uh, divided by 3. So um, was this the right answer? This is an integral, so I should I should check. Um, I take the derivative of what I got, and I'm supposed to do the derivative of the outside. Oh, I literally just did this one derivative of log cubed. Derivative of the outside. Uh, times the derivative of the inside. Um, the threes cancel out, and I got the original function. Oh, you wow. That's how I feel. All right. Um, so um, I think the moral of this one is if you see an x dividing, Think of making u equals to the logarithm. Um, or in general, if you see a derivative, something you recognize as a derivative of something else, uh, that should give you the hint for u. OK. Next, Bernie says 9c. Um, I guess, Bernie, do you have a preference on what which one I do out of if I don't get through all of them? Oh, oh this one's. I'm going to do 9c and t because um, these are shorts. I think this is 9, right? Yeah, this is 9. Is there a function? Um, that is, so 9c. Is there a function that is defined uh, in all number? I don't know who wrote this, someone who doesn't speak English very well. Um, it has domain, um, it's defined everywhere outside of zero. Um, it has a vertical asymptote at x equals zero. Um, and the derivative is positive. Meaning that f has to be increasing always. Um, well, if it has to be increasing, you better approach positive infinity this way. And, and then, Well, that already guarantees that this is an asymptote, so that it can do whatever it wants. Uh, for example, it could be, uh, well, it could, it could look like this. So this works. Um, so the answer is yes. And looking at the shape it has, um, I'm noticing that f of x equals 1 over x has this shape. Uh, the domain is the numbers that are not zero. 
the limit as it approaches zero is plus minus infinity. So that means I have a vertical asymptote. And the derivative, oh, negative, negative one over x. The derivative is positive x to the negative two, which is always positive, always strictly positive. So I guess the so the answer to this one is yes. Well, I'm going to get to 9d because um, I can do it fast. Uh, next, I'll do that sense. Um, 9d. Is there a function such that Is there a function that approaches two and whose derivative also also approaches two? I think the answer is no. Um, if it has so, it has a horizontal asymptote. at uh, y equals two. And if it's going to, so whatever the function looks like, it has to approach this line, you could cross it, but um, the function becomes horizontal. Um, So um, the derivative is going to have to approach zero. Because the function is turning horizontal. Um, I think so. If you, well, it doesn't matter. I think, I mean, I'm pretty convinced. You could use the. You could use the. What do you call it? The mean value theorem. Um, if the limit. So just another way of reaching the same conclusion, if the limit of the derivative is um, is two, then um, at some point it's bigger than one forever. So the function must be increasing faster. Then y equals x. Um, so that means that at some point, even if it starts uh, down here, some at some point it's going to pass the asymptote and and never return. Uh, so the answer to this one is no. And any sort of explanation like this that you give 
for example, like it has to look horizontal, but the derivative doesn't allow it to look horizontal. That's uh, good enough. Who says from Theon Edwards? Oh, I know who that is. I mean, all right, doesn't matter. Um, go back one second. Yes. In the meantime, I'm going to look up Dustin's question 19. All right. So Dustin said, uh, is there a function I'm sure you can rename yourself. Just saying. Um, is there a, is there a function with these properties? Uh, no horizontal asymptotes, but the function has one. No worries. I figured. Uh, for a second, I thought it was like someone who was just very interested in my exam. I thought it was a spy from the College of Engineering who want to make sure I do a very good job teaching you, but you engineer really good. Um, so, okay, the, the derivative has a horizontal and so. So the derivative could look like like this. How about how about literally just horizontal? So if it looks exactly horizontal, that means that the derivative is a constant. So if the derivative is three, uh, then what is the function? Uh, the function, well, it could be, uh, what is the function? If the derivative is three, um, well, three X is such a function. So did I just get an example? F of X equals three X, the derivative is three. This has the horizontal asymptote. Um, this has no horizontal asymptote. So the answer is yes. 3x plus c. Uh, yeah. Um, I guess you wrote that when I was asking the question, but you know, this one would also work. Any of those would work. Three, nothing special about three either. Okay. Uh, So I think that's, tell me if I'm wrong, but I think that's one question, at least from everyone who asked the question. So I guess, um, I guess we're in the second lap now. So Pascal said one E, I did one E, two C, two D, 16 L, 15, 90. Okay, so I'm gonna do Pascal's uh, next question, going back from the top uh, to C. We'll just review the uh, YouTube. Yeah. Uh, in an hour or so. To see. To see. Find all the asymptotes uh, of this function. Ooh. Exciting. Um, so this is question two. So 
So, um, only one thing to do here, well, to vertical and horizontal, but um, vertical asymptotes. happen when the limit of the function is plus minus infinity. They do not happen necessarily. You can you can leave Bernie. Um, and I mean oh, you can see a recording. So um, the you have a vertical asymptote when when the denominator is zero. Uh, sorry. Oof. When the limit is infinity, not necessarily when the denominator is zero. The denominator being zero could be a sign that the limit is going to be infinity, but it's not conclusive. And knowing that what you always do is make the denominator equal to zero and finish it at that, what I become tempted to do is to give you an exam where denominators vanish and you still don't have uh, vertical asymptotes. And if not in the exam, at least in the review worksheet, definitely I did that. But I don't remember if it was one of them. So um, if so, if this happens, this means that the limit does not exist. Um, so f uh, can't be continuous there. Thanks, it was C. So, um, where is this function not continuous? Um, it's it's that's where the denominator vanishes. So, I should find the places where the denominator uh, vanishes, but those are not necessarily going to be asymptotes. So e to the x plus 2 minus c squared equals 0. That equation has solution. I think I can tell what solution it has. Put the e squared on the other side. And then you have two exponentials equal to each other. So you can take the logarithm to undo them. x plus 2 has to be 2. So x has to be 0. So possibly. Um, there's an asymptote at x equals zero. So how do I check? I see what the limit is. What is the limit? Um, Let's see, um, if I do this limit, what I get is um, 1 plus 0 minus 2. I get negative 1 divided by 0. So this is negative 1 divided by 0. This is this is plus minus infinity, so I'm sure there is a vertical asymptote. So. At x equals zero. All right. Um, horizontal asymptotes. So for these, what to do is always the same. You take the limit at as x approaches plus and minus infinity, and you see if it equals some number. Uh, you see if the limit exists. Um, so let's let's take the limit at positive infinity.
so um, this is approaching infinity plus infinity minus two divided by infinity. So it's positive infinity. Um, it's, sorry, well, it's infinity divided by infinity. Um, since it's infinity divided by infinity, that means I can use all the terms rule. Or I could divide by the thing that looks the most important. Um, probably not worth it. Better to just use what we tell, since the derivatives are going to be easy. The derivative of the exponential is itself. Derivative of 5x is 5. Derivative of e to the x plus 2 is the derivative of the outside times the derivative of the inside. And then the derivative of a constant is um, 0. So this is what I'm left with. It looks simpler, so that's good. Um, the limit of e to the x plus 5 divided by e to the x plus 2. OK, so um, this is, again, infinity divided by infinity. Uh, so why not love tell again? You know why I want to do love tell again? Because it seems easy to do. So I'm not losing much by trying. So e to the x stays the same, but 5 disappears. And e to the x plus 2, I already found this derivative before. It, it was e to the x plus 2. So this is the limit of e to the x divided by e to the x plus 2. And, and this simplifies the, an exponential with the same base divided by another exponential of the same base is the, you get the difference of the exponents. So you get e to the negative 2. So you get a number. So x equals e to the negative 2 is a horizontal asymptote. All right. So that's one horizontal asymptote. Um, and what I got to do to find another one, possibly, I need to take the limit of the same function, but now approaching negative infinity. So if I approach negative infinity, uh, what was the function? The function was e to the x plus 5x minus 2 divided by e to the x plus 2 minus e squared. So this looks like e to the negative infinity, um, e approaches 0 when you go far off to yeah, the exponential, approaches 0 when you go far off to the left, because it's 1 over the exponential of a positive number. This is minus infinity. So this approaches 0. So this whole thing, uh, it's infinity divided by something that has a limit. So this is infinity. So, so there's no asymptote on the left. And that's it. So did I do this right? I said that there was a vertical asymptote at x equals 0 and a horizontal asymptote on the right. Um, could it be? It's the x plus 5x minus 2. Um, no. Divided by 
Video sehr exposed zu. Oh, why? x plus 2 minus e squared. So there's a vertical asymptote at x equals 0. And then there is a horizontal asymptote uh, on the right, but not on the left. So great. Um, all right. Um, So maybe one more, and and then I'll call it um, not because I I would mind being here for six hours, uh, but I know when I done review sessions in the past, I know one hour and a half, and people start feeling like they want to leave, um, which is strange because n nothing is making them stay. But. So Bernie said 15, and since we're assuming he's watching the recording. Oh, 15 is interesting. The integral from zero to one of one half e to the negative x squared divided by four. Um, oh wait, you're not going to be able to do this integral because nobody is. Um, so what I want you to do here is try to do a Riemann sum. Um, Great, so one thing I can tell about this function is I can tell that it's um, it's decreasing. Um, if I take the derivative, I get the derivative of the outside is just the exponential. And the derivative of the inside is negative uh, x over 2. So if x is between 0 and 1, this is positive. This is, of course, positive. This is positive, And there's a minus sign. So the derivative is negative always. So um, it looks something like this. It's also a positive function. So, um, well, the integral is this area. is less than the area of, so I'm going to do some Riemann sums. is smaller than the area of the, of the outside square which has height f of zero and base one. So this area is smaller than one half. Um, and it's bigger than the area down here. Um, And this has area f of 1, so 1 half e to the negative 1 fourth. What's 1 half e to the negative 1 fourth? I guess um, this requires a calculator. Oh, it's 0 0.39. So I'm almost at one decimal place. Um, this is 0 0.5. So what I should do is 
is try to um try to do this Riemann sum and um, see that the integral is bigger than the blue area. The blue area, oh. The blue area is um, the sum of these two rectangles. Um, this one has height f of one half, this one has height f of one, and they both have base 0 0.5. So it's 0 0.5 times f of 1 half plus 0 0.5 f of 1. Um, and this is the function. So the function is this. One half um, times 1 half e to the negative 0 0.5 squared divided by 4 plus 0 0.5 f of 1, which we already computed. It's 0 0.38, something 39. So let's do the last computation. Um, This one is um, 0 0.47. So 0 0.5 times 0 0.47. So this estimation is the average of 0 0.37 and 0 0.39, uh, which would make it 0 0.43. So the area is bigger than 0 0.43 and smaller than 0 0.5. And that is one decimal of precision. So there we go. Awesome, great. <clears throat> and unless you have like really urgent questions, which you probably don't because you would have asked them, I'm gonna collect there and see you tomorrow. Oh, wait, no, it's 320. Yeah, 220. I could do one more. Uh, okay, I can do one more. Um, I need to do a new Jamboard because it doesn't let me add it any more past 20. Okay, uh, which one did I miss? 2D. All right. 2D. So I need to. Oh. I need to duplicate this shit. Make a copy. All right, Tom two, I'm gonna do problem two D. Um, and I think that will answer all the questions. Um, the asymptotes of sine of x divided by x. This is very efficient. Um, <clears throat> All right, let's add it to that stuff. Um, so, um, like before, to find the vertical asymptotes, I see where the limit. is infinite. 
which means that f must be discontinuous there. Uh, so x um, has to be 0, because that's the only place where this function is continuous. So is the limit as x approaches 0 of f of x infinite? Well, let's see. This limit, uh, well, sine goes to zero, x goes to zero. Uh, this limit is zero divided by zero. So I can use L'Hopital's rule. And I can take the derivative of the top and the bottom. I, I, I mean, actually, this is a limit I've done um, before. And I knew it was one. So this is cosine of zero, which is one. So this is not infinity. So there's no vertical asymptote. Um, so um, horizontal asymptotes. I need to do the limit at infinity. So this limit is, um, well, let's say positive infinity. I need to do both. The denominator approaches infinity. Um, sine has no limit. So that means I have no idea what's happening here. Um, so what I can do is um, is use a squeeze theorem, which is what you do when you have an annoying oscillating thing. Sine of x is between one and negative one. So then dividing by x, sine of x over x is between one over x and negative one over x. So the squeeze theorem says that the limit of the, the limit of sine of x over x is between these two limits. And both limits are zero. So the whole limit is zero. So um, the limit as x approaches infinity of sine of x over x is zero. So uh, y equals zero is an asymptote. All right. Um, and well, I would have to do the limit as x approaches negative infinity. But this is the same. Um, actually, it's the same. Um, I guess it's an it's an even function.
So it's going to approach the same thing from the left and as from the right, since so it's symmetrical. So this is zero. So I don't get any new asymptotes. All right. So now I am really going to call it there. Uh, I assume I've answered your questions by now. Oof. Um, I mean, I guess you still have a little bit of time, but otherwise, um, thanks for coming. Hope you. Um, 